All right. All well, right. Well, praise God. We are excited about Midday Bible Study, and um, I uh, shared prayer uh, with the group prior to coming on. Uh, again, I want to thank Reverend Yvette uh, for this opportunity, along with our pastor uh, for uh, Midday Bible Study. This is such an amazing time to be able to uh, move in this moment and uh, hear a word from the Lord uh, in the, the middle of the week uh, when it seems like sometimes, you know, we, we need that boost, you know, we need that encouragement. And so this is such a great time. And, and um, I am so looking forward uh, to being able to share with you today from Psalm 37, uh, verses one through four. And uh, I want to read from the Amplified Version. It says, do not worry because of evildoers, nor be envious towards wrongdoers, for they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Trust, rely and have confidence in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed securely on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires and the petitions of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and the petitions of your heart. The psalmist uh, David gives us a, uh, a prescription, an antidote for when we are stressful, when we're going through, and we're in the middle of some some difficult times. And this is such an, an appropriate and, and an on-time word for where we are uh, in this time. He says, first of all, calm down. He says, calm down. Don't worry. Don't, don't get, don't, uh, you know, lose heart. Uh, and don't look at other people. You know, there are times that we look at unbelievers and, and we'll say, you know, now I'm trying to do everything right. I'm doing all that I possibly can to, to, to serve you, Lord. And I'm not understanding how is it that I'm, I'm struggling. And people that don't believe in you, they seem not to struggle. That's a question that people had that... Uh, was asked of uh, David, how how could God, you know, I mean, how are they prospering and and we're trying to do everything and it seems like we're struggling. David says, you know, just calm down. It's all good. It's all good. I got, uh, you know, God's got them. Don't worry about what's going on with them. He's got them. But I want you to to. Take, uh, take the time to, to relieve the, the struggle that you're going through by doing these things. The first thing is to trust. I want you to trust in the Lord. I want you to trust in him. Give, put your confidence in him. And then feed securely on his faithfulness. That, that, that's just amazing to me that I can relieve, you can relieve the stress that you're going through by placing your trust not on anything, not on anybody, but in the Lord. That's a great place to put your trust. That's a great person to put your trust. And to securely rely and on his faithfulness. And we'll, we'll share more about that in a little bit. And then he says, in the midst of your struggle, find yourself delighting in the Lord. And this is where we're going to where, where we're going to focus in on today is the fourth verse. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires and the petitions of your heart. The question that I would ask and I'm sure many of us have asked, how do I delight myself in the Lord in the midst of a struggle? How do I delight myself when it seems that everything is going wrong? 
I'm, I'm experiencing all types of law, I'm experiencing loss, you know, maybe a loss of a job, maybe a loss of a loved one, maybe uh, the fact that um, uh, I, I've just been told that, you know, their unemployment is about to run out or whatever the case might be. How do, how do I delight myself when it seems like everything is going wrong? How, how, how do I delight myself in the midst of, of problems? I'm glad you asked. So here it is that David says to us, you can delight, and in delighting, he will give you the desires of your heart. So the question is, how do I delight myself? Well, first of all, we need to know what delight means. What does it mean to delight ourselves in the Lord? Delighting ourselves in the Lord means that I am taking the focus off of what I'm dealing with and I'm focusing on God. I'm redirecting, I'm changing my perspective. I'm changing my perspective. I'm going from a place of despair to a place of hope. I'm going to a place of where I'm just all just frazzled. I'm just all, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm about to have a nervous breakdown to a place of, of joy in him, delighting myself in the Lord. It means that I am going to now line up my desires with what I want. Okay, I'm, perfect. Oh, no. I'm going to line up my desires to what God wants. I'm going to find peace and fulfillment in him. I'm not going to sit and when we, and many of us, when we, when we're going through our whole, every, our whole concentration is on that situation. It's on the fact of, okay, you know, we're, we're already projecting what's going to happen after certain things happen. Okay, you know, um, they're, they're talking about layoffs. It means that how am I going to pay my mortgage? How am I going to uh, be able to, to, uh, to get the food that I need? You know, how am I going to be able to take care of tuition? How am I going to be able, we get, we get a whole list. I mean, even before things happen, we already projecting on how we, you know, we just stressed to the hill. And David says to us, he says, put your, change your perspective. Instead of wondering how I'm going to, how this is going, what if this happens and what if that, change your perspective and find peace and fulfillment in the Lord. So how do I, how do I get there? How do I get there? How, how, how this, that, hey, Michelle, that sounds really great. That sounds really fantastic. How do I get there? How do I get to a place where I can delight myself in the Lord, where I can find peace and fulfillment in the Lord? The first thing that we need to do is that we need to remember. If we're going to delight ourselves in the Lord, we need to remember what he's already done. I want us to turn to um, Lamentations 3, 21. Lamentations 3, 21. Jeremiah was in the same frustrating situation that many of us find ourselves in. I mean, he was, he was going through. He was frustrated and he, he was really about to give up. He, he was just in a, a place of total stress, just total. I mean, everything was going wrong. And at that moment that he was about to give up, we come to Lamentations 321. And he says this, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. When I thought about it, when I began to think about what God had already done, I began to get hope. And he says, I thought about the fact that through the Lord's mercies, 
we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They're new every morning. When I thought about the fact there were some situations that I had been in where I could have been taken out. I could have, I, I, you know, there, there were some times my back has been against the wall before and God brought me out. When I thought about the fact that here it is that I've got mercy, new mercy, because of his mercy, I wasn't consumed. And his, it never fails. His love for me never fails. They knew every morning. So it wasn't the fact, and then the more I thought about it, he wasn't just faithful. He wasn't just, he wasn't just faithful. There's some people that are, they're faithful. You got some faithful friends and all of that. But Jeremiah says, when I thought about it, great. His faithfulness went beyond my expectations. His faithfulness, when I thought about it, I could delight in the Lord as I remember that he had gotten me out before. And when you think about it, and I want us to, you know, just take a moment, you know, and, and when you're going through, it's a good thing to maybe just sit down and just write what God has already, make a list of what he's already brought you through. Because when you make a list of what he's already brought you through, you 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 get to a place of where you know that if he could do it, if he did it before, he can do it again. So here it is that Jeremiah says, great is his faithfulness. When I recall, when I started to think about it, I moved from a place of despair to a place of hope. I could delight myself. Then David says in Psalm 124, this is one of the, the Psalms of Ascent. Our pastor did a series on the Psalms of Ascent. And David says in Psalm 124, 1 through 4, he reminds the children of Israel, he says this, he says, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would, 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 I want you all to, to, to hear what I'm saying. They would have swallowed us. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. I want he reminded them, he said, I want you all to think about we 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 were we were in some trouble. We were in some trouble. But the Lord was on our side. So I can delight myself in the Lord when I when I think about the many times that God has been there or the, the many things that he kept me from. Not only what he brought me out of, but what he kept me from then I can get to a place of delight when I remember. I can delight knowing the fact that God has, has always been there for me. As Jeremiah said, his compassion towards me fails not. But then, after we remember, then we have to rely. If I'm going to delight in him, I have to rely or take confidence in what he said. I have to remember and then rely and take confidence in what he said. So teacher Michelle, what, 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 what is God saying? What, what is he saying? Psalm 46, 10. And I want you to personalize as you as you read scripture, personalize it. Make it make it your own. He's speaking to you. He has left his word to to encourage us, to empower us, to equip us. And so here it is. He says to us, be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted over the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. I'll be exalted over your situation. Be still. Don't you don't have to worry. You don't have to stress. Kids not acting right. Grandkids not acting right. Things things look you know really crazy. We don't know you know how long this pandemic is going. Be still. I got you. I got you. 
be still and know that I am God. Those of you all that are that are in a place of where you're trying to figure out what's going on, how 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 are things going to work out? Be still and know that He is God. You can rely on that. But then He goes on to say, Psalm one eighteen six. He says that the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. The Lord is on your side. You don't have to fear. You don't have to worry about what, what's, what's about to happen. You don't have to worry about God has always been your source. For those of you all that are concerned about uh, your finances, concerned about your job, concerned about... The Lord is on your side. But then he goes on to say, Psalm 124, Psalm 121, verses 2 through 4, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He would not allow my foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber nor sleep. You don't have to stay up all night trying to figure out how to work this out, how to take care of this, how to take care of that. Pastor Meeks always shares with us, if God, if, since God is up, why, then I can go to sleep. I can delight myself knowing that God's got this. He's not going to allow me to, he's not going to allow me to, to be moved or be overtaken. He's got me. Then he goes on to say, which we can rely on, Isaiah 43 and 2. Isaiah 43 and 2. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. That, that, that's exciting. That's exciting because no matter what happens, I'm going to come out okay. You can delight yourself in the Lord because you're going to be okay. He said that he is with you. Yeah, the waters are going to come, flames will be, but you're, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You can delight because you know what the outcome is going to be because he's with you. He's with you. He's made that promise to you that he's with you. Nothing will overtake you. I know, I'm. look, yeah, the bills are there, the, 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 um, the situation is, is what it is. is you know, it's, it's hard, it's rough, but God is with you. And he has promised that the outcome is going to be great. You'll go through the fire. You're going to go through some stuff, but you'll not be burned. You won't even be scorched. That's exciting. That's exciting to know that God has made that promise to you that you, that you can rest on that. You can rely on that. But then he goes on. And he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, If I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. This is, this is the Lord. This is your heavenly father saying, I know the thoughts that I'm thinking towards you. LaDonna, I know the thoughts I'm thinking towards you, Marie. I know the thoughts, Veronica. I know the thoughts that I'm thinking towards you. Bertha, I know the thoughts. Liz, I know the thoughts I'm thinking towards you, said the Lord. I'm thinking thoughts of peace and not evil. To give you an expected and an expected outcome. The person that made you, the person who has always been with you, 
is always thinking of you and his thoughts. I don't have to worry about you can you can distinguish what's coming from God and what's coming from the devil. And please understand the fact that the devil's mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants you to always be in a place where you're not delighting in the Lord. He wants to steal your faith. He wants to kill your hope. He wants, that's his mission every single day. Every time that you wake up, that's his mission. So when you know what the mission is, then you know how to be able to deal with, with the situation. Because you also know, Jeremiah 29, 11, he says that my thoughts for you, my plan for you, is for good. My plan for you is to is 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 the very best. I'm going to give you an expected end. I know it looks rough. I know it looks rough, but you can also know the fact that you know the end of the movie. It the expected end is coming. You can you can delight on the fact, God, I don't know how you're coming through, but I know you're coming through. I know you're coming through. I know you're going to make a way. I'll never forget you all. I had um, I had filed bankruptcy, and I was in need of and and almost like the minute that I did, I, the minute that it happened, uh, when you know we had filed bankruptcy, and um, my car broke down, and so I was really you know at a, a point, uh, you know I mean I needed a car, I, you know had to get the kids to school had to get to work, all of that. And so um, it didn't seem like I should have been able to get a car or the, the projection was if you get if you if you get a car, then you're gonna have to get a used car. Uh, and you'll probably have to get somebody to co sign and all of that. And so I thought about the fact, I said, you know, God you know where you know what I'm going to do with this car. You you know that, and I know that that you got me. I know that you know. Um, I know situations are looking bad, but I know you, and I know the fact that you said you, I, I should have an expected outcome. And so, uh, to against everybody's advice, I stepped out on faith. And I said, okay, I'm going to. I'm going to a car dealership, and matter of fact, and I mean this, this was like total. I mean total, look like insane faith. I asked somebody to drop me off with my with my two children, drop me off, and I told them to leave because I was gonna have a car when I got you know when I leave. And so I go into the car dealership, and I told the told the man, I said. Um, I'm looking for a car, and um, I do want you to know that uh, you'll see on, on my credit, I filed bankruptcy, and you know, so my credit is like really shot, uh, but I'm looking for a car, and I really want a new car. Now, that that's insane. You don't tell anybody you want a new car. You know, I mean, you you know, already giving the man some, you know, he went from a nice smile, you know, because, you know, I mean, his job is to sell cars. He was like, well, now we got some really great used cars here and everything and all of that. And, you know, we're going to, you know, run a ch credit check and all that. But nine times out of 10, you're going to need to have, um, you know, a co-signer and all of that. And uh, you're going to need to be able to, um, you may have to put, you know, a couple thousand dollars down and all of that. What's even worse, you well, I didn't even have the money. I had, I had, I had, I mean, I had no money. You know, I was just, I was, you know, I told you, I just, just filed bankruptcy. I didn't have any money. I just, you know, so this was really like insane. And the fact my two kids were there, they were, you know, so now they're going to have to either see the fact that either mom is nuts for stepping out or either they're going to see God work in a tremendous way. 
And so the gentleman, uh, I've completed the form, completed the application, and he took it to the finance department, and we literally, I felt like it was hours that we sat there. I mean, to a point where I saw the shift change. I mean, it was just like, oh, my goodness. I'm like, well, gee whiz. And, you know, but I figured, I said, well, as long as it's taken, God is doing something. Because, I mean, you know, nobody ran back out. I started getting excited. I said, well, you know, I'm still here. And, you know, I mean, the kids had completed their homework. I mean, it was just, we went and just sat there a while. And, um, and then the gentleman came out. He said, are you sure you, you, you filed bankruptcy? You, you sure you, you, um, because we've been running, we've run all, you know, through all of the credit bureaus and everything, and we don't see anything. And I said, well, I'm telling you, you know, I did. He said, well, look, we, we can get you in a car. You know, we can get you in a new car. And, um, you know, we can, um, I mean, whatever. Well, how much do you have down? I said, well, I really, I, you know, I, I can I post day to check? I mean, I don't have any money. He said, you don't have no have money. And I said, well, you know, this first time, we're going to give you first time credit, this, this, that. Okay, won't need any money down. And we drove off with a brand new car. And in that moment, my children were able to see that God could be trusted. They could be able to see that God, we could count on God. Uh, they, they bring this up. Uh, and, and now they're adults and they bring this moment up uh, many times that I watch what God could do because he knew the plan he knew the plan and I could delight on the fact that I knew I had no doubt that the outcome because his word said it I could depend on it that he was going to give me and expect it in. But not only can we rely on the fact that we can, that he he knows the thoughts, but Matthew 6, 31 and, and 30, uh, 31 through 36. And if you all haven't had the opportunity, you need to uh, definitely uh, go on YouTube to see uh, Reverend Yvette's lesson from Monday night, and she really uh, shares it, uh, this scripture very powerfully. Uh, but here it is that in Matthew, Jesus says, therefore, don't worry. Don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear, for your Heavenly Father knows what you need. He knows that you need all of these things. But look, change your perspective and do this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Don't take your focus off of what you're dealing with. Take your focus off of and seek him. When you seek him, you'll have everything that you need. Don't sit there. For those of you all that, that, are, that are in a struggle, take your focus off the struggle. Your Heavenly Father's got you. He knows, he knows what, what you stand in need of. He, he knew the bill was coming before you knew it was coming. He knew what was going on with, with, you know, with your job before you knew what was going on with your job. As a matter of fact, he's the same God that when you were looking for a job before that gave you that job. And he'll be the same one when you need it. He'll have that door open. He says, God's got you. Your Heavenly Father knows. So let change your direction. Change your direction. Change your focus. Change your thinking. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then watch him work. Watch him work. If I'm going to delight myself in the Lord. I've, I've got to, I have got to rely and take confidence in what he said. What else has he said to me? 
Romans 8, 28. Not only is it our pastor's favorite scripture, but it's mine as well. And it says, and we know that all things will work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All things are going to work together for the good. Now, it may not always feel good, but it's going to work together for my good. It's going to work together. I can expect, I can expect, for it to work together for my good. I can expect God to show up and that it's going to work out. Don't know how, don't, don't, don't know how, don't know when, but I can expect it to work together. I have expectation. I can delight in him because I know he's going to work it out for my good. I can rely on the fact, and, and Paul goes on to say even further in Romans 8, says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. It, it would think that, it would think that, that we would just be going, you know, that, that we're, we're about to be taken out, that we would be accounted as sheep, as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, yet, I want you, you all to, to grab onto that, yet in all these things, yet in all that you have been through, yet, yet in all these, you are more, and you need to say this to yourself. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I might get knocked down, but I'm coming back up. In all these things, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror. I can delight myself in the Lord because I'm more than a conqueror. We've seen God work. We've seen God work. We can remember and we can rely. We can rely on the fact that in John 4, 4, 1 John 4, 4, he says that you are God's little children and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. You're God's child. Greater, he's greater than any situation that the devil wants to throw your way. He is greater. Greater is he that is in you. You can take delight in that. You know, it's amazing about with children. Children will pass whatever they have, you know, if they, they got any type of, if it's tuition, whatever, they never worry about it. They never worry about it because they, you know, they, they know the parent has it. My daughter never worried about her college tuition, ever. Never heard her call up and say one time, mom, well, dad, uh, you know, uh, is tuition okay? Is that... It, it never, it ne she never worried about it. Cause in her mind, we, her parents had it. So she was always happy. Cause she figured, you know, they got it. It's all good. I don't have to worry about it. That's the posture that we need to have. God's got it. He's got it. Take your eyes off the problem and focus on the problem solver. God's got it. He's got you. He's got you. So we remember, we rely on what he said, and then we rejoice. We can take delight in the Lord by rejoicing. 
the word rejoice uh, is recorded in the Bible 240 times. God wants his children to be excited over the fact that he's got us. When we rely on his word, we can rejoice. Psalm 511 says, let all those that put their trust in the Lord rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because he defends them. Let them that love the name of the Lord be joyful in him. You all, we can keep a smile on our face every day because God's got us. You can delight in him. How do you delight? By getting excited about what you know he's going to do, what he's already done. I'm relying on his, that you are, you've taken confidence in him. Your trust is in him. So rejoice. Rejoice. Take a moment when you stop to think about all that God has done. You can walk around your house and you can be excited. You can walk around and ha in your, you can sit at your desk at your job and be excited because of what God has already done and what you know. Because he said, I'm going to give you an expected outcome. You can rejoice on credit knowing that he's got you. That's exciting. Psalm 118.24 says that this is the day the Lord has made. So every day, every day, you know, that you're able to wake up, you, you, you know, we read in Jeremiah where, where he says that he has given us new mercies, great is his faithfulness. So here it is. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's exciting. Doesn't matter what, what comes in the mail, what emails, you know, now they even text you your bills. Doesn't matter what you receive. This is the day the Lord has made. I can rejoice and be glad in it because God's got me. He's got me. He's got me. I'm his child. He, he loves me. I can rejoice. This is the day. Every morning that you wake up, this is the day the Lord has made. And I'm going to make a conscious decision that I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Finally, Paul says it like this. He says in Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And he said, you know, just in case you didn't get it the first time, again, I say rejoice. You've got a lot to be excited about. You don't have to have your head hung down. You can delight yourself in the Lord. When you think about what God has already done, and then you can rely on the fact of what he said he will do on your behalf, you can rejoice. You can get excited. You don't have to worry about what the outcome is with the doctor. You, you, you've had some scares and some reports because God's got you. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. And you can delight. You don't have to stress. You don't have to be, you know, uh, uh, looking at other people and saying, God, you know, having this pity party that the devil wants to you throw your way in. Why me? And nobody else is going through this but me. No, you are chosen. Ephesians says, I am chosen. I am God's child. I have the spirit of adoption. I got access. I can cry, Abba, Father. Man, I'm excited about that. I mean, you, you, you wonder why you see some people that are just happy all the time because they understand the fact that God's got them. When they remember the fact that I've been through before. I've had challenges since the car, since the car situation. I've had challenges before. And I remember the fact that God could, could take bad credit and not let those people see what I knew and what I had shared with them they should have seen and know the fact that if God could take care of that, what's a life bill? If he could pay tuition, 
what 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 is what is the next situation? If he if 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 he could heal me from one thing, what well, why couldn't he do it again in another area? I could take delight in that. So we can be excited, you all. We can be excited over the fact that we can delight because we trust. We trust in him. We can we can we can be secure and feed in his righteousness. I pray you all that you've been encouraged today. I pray that you'll be in a place that if you are in a place of despair, that you can now redirect your thinking, change your perspective, and know that God loves you. Put your focus on him. Line up your desires with him. Take a moment today and just just find a piece of paper and just begin to write down everything that God has done for you. Just begin to write. Just remind yourself of what he's done. Uh, the children of Israel, they had these 12 stones to remind them of what God had done for them while they were in the wilderness, how he had brought them out. There are times we need to do that, and you need to put it on your refrigerator so that every time that you're thinking about, you know, okay, uh, you want to you want to go there. The devil wants to take you there. That you look at that, you look on the refrigerator, and then you get to a place of delight again. And then grab your scripture, grab your scripture, grab a scripture that you can stand on and make it personal to you. God, I know you said that you would do exceeding and abundantly above all that I could ever think or ask. So God, I'm excited over the fact of watching that exceeding and that abundant take place in my life and then start rejoicing. Go on with your day. Get excited about what he's getting ready to do. Be in anticipation like a, like a child waiting for Christmas. Hey, I know you're coming through. I don't know, I don't know how you're going to do it or when you're going to do it, but I'm excited about it. And watch God get excited about the fact that you're excited and move on your behalf. Let's pray you all. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for this moment, God. I pray, Father, that lives have been touched and transformed, that we'll grow closer that to you, God, that we'll embrace your word, that we'll delight, find ourselves delighting in you every single day, God. You are so good. You are so kind. You are so merciful. Thank you for great is your faithfulness towards us. God, thank you for all that you're going to do, God. Thank you that this moment will be life-changing for your people, God, that we'll know that we can count on the fact that all things are going to work together for our good, that we're more than conquerors through you. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Awesome. awesome lecture, Miss Michelle. Great lesson. Great, great lesson. lesson. Great, uh, great, great lesson. Praise God. Amen. Powerful. Wonderful lesson. Wonderful. Great lesson. Thank you. Amazing. Michelle. God bless you. Great lesson. Thank you. God bless you, Michelle. Thank you so much, Michelle. You made my day. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord.